Around the world, people dedicate their lives to preserving the traditional crafts of their culture. Whether it be swords crafted from sheets of steel, or two meter tall longbows made from filed raw bamboo, these crafts have lasted hundreds of years. Join us as we take a look back at the intricate crafts some artisans have spent decades learning to master. Japanese sword making is a tradition that goes back centuries, and one that's carried on to this day. Each sword requires dedication, skill, and can take over 18 months to create. The resulting blades can be worth thousands of dollars. So what makes them so expensive? So, the world is in まあ、鉄器と鉄器があってあのナイフ刀剣の文化はあるわけですですがこの、えー、焼きを入れたその鋼をきれいに磨き上げてその鉄を鑑賞するという文化があるのはあの日本独自のものなんですねマスター・アキヒーラは今日の鉄器を作り始めています彼は作られたクラフトを作られたクラフトを作られたクラフトを作られたクラフトを作られたクラフトを作られ and years of training, he became one of the 180 swordsmiths working across Japan. Japanese swords have always been more than just weapons. They were artworks, status symbols, and throughout history held a huge spiritual importance. そ,のそういうようなものをあの打ち払う力が刀にあると考えて刀を非常に大切にしたしあのそれを身につけることによって横島なものから身を守ろうとしたんです決してこれがね戦いの道具としてあの日本人にとともにあったというわけではないんですよ。あの現在では確かにあの美術品として我々刀鍛冶は作っているわけですけどもやはりあの。非常によく切れるように作られていますしもしいざという時にがあるならば、まあ、武士が命を懸けられるだけのものに私は作っているつもりですから、まあ、今の現代の私たちの刀鍛冶がこうやって刀を作っている理由というのもやはりあの。絵を楽しまれる絵を鑑賞して楽しまれる方がいるように刀をコレクションして楽しまれる方がいるんですねそういう方のために作ることもあるしあるいは、えー、子供もができたあるいはお孫さんができた娘がお嫁に行くそういった場合のお守り刀として作ってほしいということでこうやって刀を。Each sword is a unique artwork and one that is made to be admired as you would a painting. As sheets of steel are folded into each other again and again, wood grain like patterns form. And these patterns, coupled with the skill of the swordmaster, create a completely unique blade. Why do we see the face? I am a person who is 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 a person. 現代のものであればその作家がどういう時代のものを狙って作ったかなという作為がわかります。Knowing what to look for in each sword is important. Characteristics like the angle and length of the blade, or the way the metal is folded, could give away the era in which it was made, and even who made it. 切っ先の部分というのが、まあいろんな直線曲線が集まる場所でもあって、これはここはあの刀鍛冶の腕の見せ所でもあるし、その刀を通りは研ぎ師さんの腕の見せ所でもあります。だから僕らはこういうこういうところを見て、あ、この刀鍛冶はうまいなとか、あるいはこの研ぎ師さんはうまいななんてことを思うわけです。またこの、えー、そうですね、ハブチ、まあ、えー、この白い刃文の上の方、この境目のあたりにはですね、えー、そうですね、まるでこう星を散らしたようなこうキラキラした粒が見えてくると思うんです。
Looking at the months of work that go into creating each blade, it's easy to see why these swords command such a high price. And as there are less and less sword masters across Japan, these works of art are only going to become more valuable. それは一つには僕のプライドをかけて常にいいものを作らなくてはいけないという気持ちです。その中にはですね、僕の刀を持つ人に喜んでもらいたいということもあるけれど、もう一つは千年経ってその千年後の人が僕の刀を見たときにい
This requires at least 30 years of experience. Why? Because customers aren't paying for just the finite raw material, but also for a high level of artistry. For tea enthusiasts, buying a senior or master Zisha teapot is like buying functional art. Functional in that it's made for a great tea drinking experience, and like art because drinkers appreciate the delicate work and skill required to make it. A telltale sign of just how well a teapot is crafted is how liquid pours from the neck. The tea should pour out splatter-free from a well-made Zisha teapot. In the end, it's the importance tea making and tea drinking have in China that makes such expensive teapots worth what customers pay. The most distinct aspect of a Japanese bow is the length. At over two meters tall, these bows are difficult to handle, and making them is just as challenging. Bow makers file raw bamboo and insert over 100 wedges to curve the bow. Depending on the materials, these bows can cost over $2,000. So how are these bows made? And why are they so expensive? Longbows have been used in Japan for centuries. But today, you'll mostly find them in a martial art called Kudo. You can buy a synthetic bow for around $400, but many experienced archers prefer the feel of handmade bamboo bows. Kanjuro Shibata's family has been making bows for over 450 years. It all starts with raw bamboo. Kanjiro tries to obtain most of his bamboo locally, from around Kyoto, but it has to dry for three years before it's ready to be used. Kanjiro shaves the dried bamboo down to a thickness of four to five millimeters. This is one of the most physically demanding parts of the process, because the bamboo is dense and fibrous. <laughs> A Japanese bow consists of three main layers, two pieces of bamboo and an inner core called nakauchi. The nakauchi is made out of laminated bamboo and wax tree wood, and it's much harder than the bamboo on the outside. Kanjuro glues filed bamboo on either side of the nakauchi to form the bow. For some bows, he uses a natural glue called nibe, which is harder to work with, making the final product more expensive than the bows that use synthetic glue. But the hardest part is bending this straight bamboo into the shape of a bow. Kanjoto winds rope around the bamboo and inserts over 100 wedges while bending curves into the bow. 
Because of the bow's length, this process is extremely tedious, but it must be done quickly before the glue dries. Thanks to decades of practice, it takes Kanjoro around 10 to 15 minutes. Despite the importance of this step, Kanjuro only shapes his bows by eye. その After the glue dries, Kanjuro removes the wedges and bends the bow into its final shape. ま、見た目は Kanjuro's bows cost anywhere from $900 to around $2,200, depending on the materials used. But bows made for display can cost a lot more. His family's clients include everyone from local Kyudo practitioners to the imperial family. But Kanjuro wants his bows to be accessible to more people. As long as it doesn't affect the final quality, he tries to make the process as efficient as he can. ま、Despite the high price, using a well-made bow that feels good is essential for archers. で、Japanese chef's knives are world renowned for their unique design and durability. And just one can cost you over $900. From heating and hammering the metal, to sharpening the knife's edge and polishing the final blade. These are only a few of the skills a Japanese artisan spends a lifetime learning to master. So what makes these knives so coveted? And why are they so expensive? Terukazu has spent 37 years crafting chef's knives at his family's factory in Echizen. Each one goes through 100 production stages. 
It's a process that requires over 10 years of practice. Compared to popular European chef's knives, Japanese blades are lighter and sharper, allowing for more precise cuts. On the low end, most Takamura blades cost a couple hundred dollars, but custom-made pieces can sell for 15 times that. One of the most expensive knives produced by the shop sold for $6,900. First, Takamura Hamono was one of the first knife makers to use a certain kind of stainless steel called high speed powdered steel. It was originally designed for power tools, like saws and drills, because of its durability and strength, two qualities Japanese chef's knives are known for today. Once the metal is cut, it's heated in an electric oven to harden and strengthen the blade. Then the hammering begins. At this point, the artisan relies on experience and instinct to guide them in producing a blade of ideal strength and thinness. Hammering leaves behind circular indents, something knife makers in the past typically polished away. But 60 years ago, Terukazu's father and his colleagues discovered the benefit of knives with a textured surface like this. <laughs> This hammered finish, called tuchime, allowed chefs to chop ingredients quickly and more efficiently. It also added a beautiful aesthetic to each blade, another element highly valued in Japanese knives. But a Japanese chef's knife wouldn't be nearly as valuable without a supremely sharp edge. An artisan presses the blade against a rough grindstone made of natural rock, a sharpening material you'll only see used in Japan. This step distinguishes an artisan's skill and ultimately sets a knife's final value. It takes one full day to sharpen the blade, and another full day to secure and polish the handle. The final knife is totally unique, each with its own distinct balance, thickness, and design. あと、Several of the world's best chefs use Takamura's knives, from Rene Redzepi at Noma to Massimo Botura at Osteria Francescana. 
Another one of those chefs is Masakazu Fuji. He uses Takamura's knives to prepare fish at his restaurant in Fuku. ま、ギター Ejizen has been the center of high quality knife making since blacksmiths began crafting chef's knives here 700 years ago. And today the city is internationally recognized for its cutlery production. But before knives, artisans made swords, another valuable trade in Japanese culture. ところが日本の方って細いですよね。なぜ折れないかっていうと真ん中に柔らかい鉄が入ってるんです。そして外側に硬い鋼で覆ってる。二重構造になってるんで折れないですね。で、日本の包丁はその技術を生かして真ん中
งานฝีมือคือหรือว่างานแฮนด์เมคนะครับเป็นงานที่ยากก็ว่าได้จะว่าง่ายก็ได้สำหรับคนที่เป็นนะครับ The process begins by cutting the sheet material into a circle. No materials go to waste here. Even the offcuts are used to make the largest shape possible. It's at this early stage where the eventual cost of each gong is determined. ความถูกความแพงนี่นะนะว่าเราต้องการใบเล็กใบใหญ่หรือว่าต้องการวัตถุดิบครับถ้าวัตถุดิบเป็นเนื้อเหล็กมันก็จะถูกถ้าต้องการแพงกว่านั้นนิดหน่อยก็เป็นเนื้อสแตนเดร์ดถ้าต้องการที่มีคุณลภาพสูงสุดก็มีคุณค่าก็จะเป็นเนื้อทองเหลืองครับ Once the edges have been smoothed A welder attaches the sides. This flat dish is then ready to be hammered into shape. The gongs made here in Thailand are of the bossed variety, where a center knob is surrounded by smaller nipples. This design is stenciled on the back of the gong with a homemade compass, and bangers begin to hammer out the shape. The bangers use templates engraved into tree stumps. That allow the knob and nipples to be hammered out fully and evenly. Then comes the hardest part, the tuning. Tuners observe and train for years to master their skill. He strikes the gong in different places. And listens for acoustic imperfections. <laughs> Using a mallet to make slight alterations, he continues this process, hoping to reduce dissonance in the sound frequencies emitted from the gong. ทัศน์นี่เราจะรู้ว่าเสียงคล้องจะทำยังไงให้มันดังครับแล้วจุดไหนที่มันไพเราะจุดไหนที่เสียงกังวานเราต้องรู้ครับต้องรู้ว่าจะจะตกแต่งตรงไหนดีบางเจ้าเขาชอบเสียงสูงก็ตามเหมือนกับคอสเสียงแต่ได้เสียง Once satisfied with the sound, the gong is coated in enamel, ready for intricate artworks to be hand painted. Bunlak's workshop produces gongs of all different shapes and designs, including specially made gongs which can sell for up to one million baht. Were around $33,000. คือพิเศษเนี่ยคือเป็นคล้องใหญ่ครับที่ลูกค้าเขาสั่งสั่งเป็นพิเศษว่าต้องการเอาไปอ่าเป็นอนุสรหรือเป็นแบบว่าเป็นวัดไหนที่มีชื่อเสียงเขาชอบเอาไปให้นักท่องเที่ยวชมว่าคล้องเนี่ยต้องการคล้องใหญ่พิเศษแล้วก็ลายที่สวย The cultural significance of gongs is clear to see in Ubon Ratchathani, a major city at one end of the Gong Highway, where the world's largest gong towers stand proudly next to the Wat Tham k u a s a w a n Temple. The use of gongs is deeply ingrained in Buddhism, and according to the Tourism Authority of Thailand, the Gong Highway is responsible for supplying most of the country's 30,000 Buddhist temples with their gongs. So, what about the rest of the world? In the West, gongs have become commonplace not only in popular culture, but also in meditation studios and symphony orchestras. The largest non-Asian gong manufacturer is p a i s t i based in Germany. It's been producing gongs since 1906, and its largest gong, an 80-inch symphonic model, retails for around $27,000. This type of flat face gong, sometimes referred to as a tam tam, gives more of a crash sound, which is different from the tuned tones of a bossed gong. p a i s t i s method for producing gongs are more scientific than those on the Gong Highway. With acoustic testing equipment used to evaluate the gong's frequency, but the quality and traditional craftsmanship at Bunlak's workshop is clear to see, and the historical importance of the gong is felt throughout Southeast Asia. 
ไม่ว่าจะเป็นงานวันเกิดงานแต่งงานกองบวชงานประเพณีต่างๆครับในวัฒนธรรมไทยนี่นะครับคือว่าจะเป็นงานกระถินใช่ไหมครับงานผ้าป่าอย่างเงี้ยก็ทําหรือคนเขาอยากทําบุญสะเดาะเคาะพวกนี้เขาก็ซื้อไปถวายวัดครับคือเสียงกองวานนะครับกองวานแล้วก็เสียงยาวแล้วก็ตีไปเนี่ยรู้สึกกองวานในหัวใจซึ้งในเสียงเพราะมันเสียงเป็นเสียงบอกบุญนะครับเสียงบอกบุญคือเสียงคล้องในเป็นเสียงบอกบุญเป็นสัญญาณเพราะว่าจะเป็นคนเท่าคนเจ๋ที่โบราณโบราณเขารู้จักว่าเสียงคล้องเนี่ยเขาจะยกมือเนี่ยสาธุโมทนานะครับคือเสียงของอยู่ที่ไหนนี่คือเสียงบุญอยู่ที่นั่นครับ